क्लासीफायर so let's start with a uh, one such metric f1 score we had this definition of precision and we had this definition of uh, sensitivity true positive rate or recall so recall actually calculates how many of the actual positives our model captured through labeling it as positive or true positive right uh, precision on the other hand it talks about how precise how accurate your model is out of those predicted positive or in fact how many of them are actually positive if we talk about uh, our sick patient detection problem uh, if actual positive is predicted as negative the consequence can be very bad for the patient similarly in sick patient detection if a sick patient goes to the test and predicted as not sick as not diseased the cost that is associated with false negative will be extremely high if the, if the sickness is contagious for example in covid right so so uh, this is both recall and precision are important and uh, we said last time that we cannot have both high values of recall and precision uh, at the same time because we cannot have a decision boundary that perfectly separates and uh, the two classes right okay. uh, and there's a trade off between precision and recall higher levels of recall may be obtained at the price of lower values of precision uh, to counter this we want we need to define a single measure that combines these two uh, to evaluate performance of a classifier right okay. so there are different uh, measures uh, available in the literature uh, people have issued, proposed different measures different ways to combine uh, recall and precision uh, we'll talk about these four uh, in in uh, in this short video so we'll talk about f1 score uh, in later uh, matthew score ration coefficient 11 point average precision and what do we mean by the break even point very very briefly okay let's start with f1 score right so we have uh, precision and we have recall and we want to combine these two so f1 score is nothing but just a weighted harmonic mean of recall and precision right mathematically it is given by uh, okay, i will define for uh, i will define generalized f score which is called f beta right so a beta is a parameter uh, that is uh, that is there is a weight uh, assigned to uh, uh, in this uh, to, to recall right so what is beta here so beta measures the effectiveness of classification uh, so we give beta times as much importance to recall as precision because beta is coming with with recall right or we can say recall is considered beta times as important as precision this is nothing but just a weighted harmonic mean of recall and precision when uh, here beta can be any value greater than equal to 0 when beta is equal to 0 and beta score is precision only when beta is equal to infinity so you only get recall right so uh, the most commonly used values of beta uh, is uh, beta is equal to 1 and what we term as beta as f1 score right it is simply uh, a standard harmonic mean of precision and recall that is uh, 2 over Uh, yeah. So two over one over precision, and we have one over recall. Right? This is a standard definition of if you have two variables a and b, right? Harmonic mean is defined as one two over one over a and one over b, right? Or we call it two a b over a plus b. This is um, a standard definition of harmonic mean. Okay, uh, the question uh, we should answer. Uh, that why did we choose harmonic mean right we could take a simple average 
or arithmetic mean, or we could uh, take a geometric mean that you multiply these two and take a square root. There's a geometric mean. Why harmonic mean? I will spend a couple of minutes uh, to explain that why do we use harmonic mean uh, and why not arithmetic mean or geometric mean. Uh, harmonic mean is preferred as it penalizes model the most. It's, it is a conservative average. Uh, mathematically, we can say that harmonic mean is less than or equal to geometric mean, and that is less than or equal to arithmetic mean for two numbers. To explain this further, uh, I have plotted uh, harmonic mean, geometric mean, arithmetic mean, minimum and maximum for different values of precision while while keeping recall at fixed value. Okay, this is the plot we have. So here recall is 70%. Uh, so the value of recall is 70%, right? I'm changing the value of precision. And for each, each value of precision, I'm computing arithmetic mean of recall and precision, geometric mean of recall and precision, and harmonic mean of recall and precision. Uh, and also minimum of recall precision, maximum recall precision. If you see here, Right, this green line, this green curve is for, so this one is for harmonic mean. Right? And if you observe that harmonic mean is less than or equal to geometric mean, in fact, it is equal to when a precision is equal to recall and you are at this 70% point, point. Right? Yeah, you are here, only then they are equal. Right? Or we can say, uh, harmonic mean penalizes model the most. If, if you improve the harmonic mean of recall and precision, uh, you, expect, uh, you, you expect the improvement in the geometric mean or arithmetic mean. In other words, we can say improvement in harmonic mean implies uh, improvement in arithmetic mean or geometric mean. So this is, so this is a very, very brief explanation that why do we choose, why do we define F1 score as harmonic mean between recall and precision? I hope this is clear now. Okay, uh, let's talk about one more metric, uh, which is uh, Matthew's correlation coefficient that combines recall and precision, right? If you, if you observe, uh, so precision, recall, and F1 score, they're all asymmetric, right? It simply means if you change, if you swap classes, right? If you call class one as zero and class zero as one, so uh, you will get a different result. You will get a different uh, score for F1, different value for precision and different value for recall, right? So we can say F1 score uh, is asymmetric uh, with respect to classes. So and to, uh, the solution is this, if we treat the true class and the predicted class as simple two variables, right? You should not call them positive and negative. And we simply compute the correlation coefficient between these two classes. So this correlation coefficient is in fact, <coughs> my apologies, this correlation coefficient is in fact, uh, is known as Matthew's correlation coefficient. And mathematically it is defined as uh, simply uh, true positive, true negative, minus uh, false positive into false negative. And uh, in, the, in the denominator, we have a square root of all possible combinations of the four quantities in, in the uh, uh, confusion matrix we have, right? And uh, by definition, uh, the Matthews correlation coefficient is less than or equal to one. Uh, when uh, there are different interpretations uh, for different values of uh, this coefficient, when this coefficient is equal to one, we have perfect classification. When this coefficient is equal to minus one, we have perfect misclassification. Uh, when this coefficient is equal to zero, uh, so we are on, uh, our classifier does not have any power or the performance of classifier is not better than a random classifier. Uh, and you see this MCC, and this is, uh, this is symmetric by design, right? If you switch classes, uh, the value of uh, Matthew's coefficient coefficient does not change. Uh, it, it, it will stay the same. Okay. So Matthew's coefficient coefficient is, 
So F1 score is widely used, uh, but MCC is also used. Uh, F1 is an asymmetric measure, uh, MC is a symmetric measure. Uh, so these are the uh, uh, very fundamental level differences between F1 score and uh, MCC. Uh, and both combine recall and precision and give you one quantity. Uh, and recall and precision both are hidden uh, in, in are embedded uh, in these two quantities. Okay. Uh, there are some other metrics uh, proposed in the literature. Uh, Eleven point average precision, uh, as the name suggests, right? It's, it's, a, it's a very very simple method. So you adjust the threshold of the classifier such that the recall takes the following 11 values, right? So you adjust threshold of the classifier and you only observe recall, right? So you take recall is equal to 0.1, so 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.9 up to one, right? So 11 values from zero to one with an increment of 0.1. Right? And for each of this value of recall, you record the precision. For when we call is equal to zero, you record precision. When we call is equal to point 0.1, you record precision. In such a way, you will have 11 values of precision. Right? And you take average of these 11 values, what you get is, uh, is referred to as average precision or 11 point average precision. If you, if you want to feel it, uh, that what is in fact 11 point average precision, this is simply, uh, if you have a precision recall curve, uh, you take 11 uniformly sampled points on this precision recall curve and you take average value of, of those 11 points. Okay. You could take more than 11 points, right? But, and if you, take, you can take have a finer resolution on, on that recall precision curve. Or this is simply a mean of, uh, of the curve of the distribution of the relationship between recall and precision. It's in fact, it's an estimate of the mean. Uh, Okay, and the break-even point, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a point when precision is equal to recall, as the name suggests. So when recall is equal to precision, uh, so you would say that point uh, or that value of threshold, for the value of threshold for which recall is equal to precision uh, is, is a break-even point. And you can use break-even point uh, to evaluate performance classifier that you want uh, both recall and precision to have same value. Okay, uh, so, uh, so these are just uh, a quick overview of uh, different metrics uh, that combine recall and precision to form a single metric. Uh, the most commonly used is F1 score um, and followed by a Matthew's correlation coefficient. Okay, so we stop here. Uh, so far, we have talked about, uh, we started with accuracy, uh, then we talked about uh, four quantities, true, positive, true, negative, false, positive, false, negative. Uh, using these four quantities, uh, we define confusion metrics and other, other metrics such as recall, precision, specificity. Uh, we saw a trade-off between these metrics and how can we combine different metrics uh, to form a single metric in this video. Uh, so that's all uh, for the for the evaluation of a binary classifier. Uh, in the next video, uh, I will quickly introduce uh, what do you mean by multi-class classification. And uh, we will also look at uh, uh, different methods to evaluate a multi-class classifier. And what do you mean by micro and macro averaging uh, in the context of multi-class cl classification. We stop here and see you in the next video, inshallah. Love you.